In this lecture, we're going to discuss carbene chemistry. So what exactly is a carbene? A carbene is a compound that has the following molecular formula. A carbon, the central carbon, attached to two R groups. These R groups could be any groups. And the carbon also contains a lone pair of electrons. Now here are two different examples of carbene molecules. Here we have the simplest carbene molecule in which the carbon is attached to two identical H atoms. And here we have a second type of carbene in which the R groups have been replaced with bromine atoms. So where do we produce our carbene molecules? So where do carbene molecules come from? Well, generally speaking, we can form carbene compounds from diazo compounds. So what's a diazo compound? It's a compound that contains nitrogen atoms. So once again, carbenes are usually produced from nitrogen containing compounds known as diazo compound. So let's examine one specific reaction from which we can produce the following carbene. So we want to produce this simplest carbene. So let's look at the following reactant. In this reactant, we have a triple bond between two nitrogens, and we also have a single bond between a nitrogen and the carbon. So if we add energy in the form of light, if we shine light on this reactant, this bond will break, and this lone pair of electrons will go onto the nitrogen, forming the following diatomic N2 molecule. Now we're also going to form our carbene because this bond will dissociate, leaving our central atom attached to two identical H atoms and the lone pair of electrons. Now both of these species, both of these products are neutral products. So here we produced our carbene molecule from a diazo compound, a compound containing two nitrogen atoms. So, now let's examine the second step. In the second reaction, we actually show why these carbenes are useful. So, normally, carbenes can be used to produce cyclopropane rings, three-membered rings in which every single atom is a carbon atom. So, once again, what happens is an alkene, any type of alkene here, the following symmetrical alkene, reacts with our carbene molecule to form the following cyclopropane molecule. Now, before we discuss the mechanism of this reaction, let's discuss what the structure is of our carbene molecule. And let's use this specific carbene as an example. So earlier I said this carbon is a central carbon, and in fact this carbon is sp2 hybridized. That means these CH bonds, these bonds between carbon and the alkyl groups in this case, is sp2 hybridized. So this bond is sp2 hybridized, this bond is sp2 hybridized, and we have a third lobe shown here which is also sp2 hybridized. Now we also contain a 2p orbital that is not hybridized shown here. Now we have the two electrons on the central carbon that we need to place in either one of these uh, orbitals. Now there are two different ways that we can arrange those electrons. We can either take both of those electrons and place them into the sp2 hybridized orbital, like shown here. So in this case, both electrons shown with these arrows were placed in the sp2 hybridized orbital. And this carbene is known as a singlet. And let's represent it with uh, Roman numeral 1. Now, Another way of arranging the electrons is in the following way. Instead of putting both of those electrons into one orbital, we can take one electron out and place it in the empty 2p orbital shown here. So this is a second way of arranging our electrons. And this is known as the triplet carbene. And let's represent it with Roman numeral 2. Now, I want to answer the following question. Which one of these 
will predominate at equilibrium. Remember, this is a reaction. So our singlet is converted to triplet and vice versa. Now, whichever one of these is thermodynamically more stable, that will predominate. It will be lower in energy at equilibrium. The question is, which one is the more stable one? Well, let's recall that whenever we take electrons and place it into an orbital that has more S character, those electrons are closer to the nucleus and therefore more stable. Because this orbital has more S character than a 2p orbital, placing an electron into this orbital will stabilize it more than if we place that same electron into the 2p orbital. So technically, if we're, or, if we're only dealing with one electron, if we place the one electron into here, that will stabilize it more. It will be lower in energy than if we take that electron and place it into the 2p orbital. But notice what else is going on. If we place two electrons, the maximum number of electrons, into our uh, sp2 orbital, we will create electrostatic repulsion. Those two electrons will repel one another. And if they repel one another, according to Coulomb's law, our energy will increase. And in fact, because of this electrostatic repulsion found in this sp2 orbital, that will increase the energy. And so our singlet will be higher in energy than our triplet. So once again, to overview, even though both electrons are found in the more stable sp2 orbital in the singlet carbene, the electrostatic repulsion between electrons in the same orbital leads to increase in energy. So electrostatic repulsion drives the singlet to be higher in energy than our triplet. So the triplet it's, is slightly lower in energy than our singlet, which is slightly higher in energy. So because triplets are more stable, are thermodynamically more stable at equilibrium, they will predominate. This will be found in higher proportion than our singlet. But even though this will predominate, our singlet is much more reactive because it's higher in energy. And because it's much more reactive and because the activation energy is smaller if we go from singlet to product than for triplet to product, our singlets will be much more reactive and the rates of reaction will be much higher for the singlet. And therefore, it's the singlet that will react and not the triplet. Now, let's examine our mechanism for our reaction. What's the addition reaction of carbenes? In other words, when we take an alkene, like the one shown here, and we add a carbene, what actually takes place? Well, first, let's begin by looking at the singlet, and then let's look at the triplet. So let's begin with our singlet. Here we have the singlet, as shown here, and our two electrons in the sp2 hybridized orbital, and here we have our alkene. So our two carbon, we have a single bond, the sigma bond, and the pi bond between the two p orbitals, shown by these two electrons. What happens is, this pair of electrons attacks this carbon, and the pair of electron here goes onto this carbon, forming the following cyclopropane. So here we have one sigma bond, a second sigma bond, and a third sigma bond. So notice, both of these electrons are opposite spins. They have opposite spins. And so these two bonds will in fact form, once again, when a singlet carbene, like the one shown here, reacts with an alkene, it does so in a single step. So this is a single step mechanism, not a multi-step mechanism. But on the other hand, if we take a triplet, like the one shown here, and react it with the same exact alkene as shown here, we no longer have a single step. Now we're going to have a multi-step mechanism. Why? Well, let's examine. Now we have two electrons that have the same exact spin. And here we have two electrons in a pi bond with opposite spin. So these two electrons will still attack this carbon, forming one of the bonds, but the higher bond will not form. Why? Well, because for this bond to form, these two electrons must have opposite spins. And in this case, they have the same exact spin.
So that means before this bond is formed, this has to spin. An electron spin has to take place or this carbon bond can rotate. If this carbon bond is rotated, then the electron spin will become opposite and now, only now, can these electrons interact, overlap to form our cyclopropane. So triplets, unlike singlets, can only form one bond because only one pair of opposite spins is formed. There exists a second step in which the carbon-carbon bond rotates so that the spins are now opposite. And then our bonds can overlap, our orbitals can overlap, forming our cyclopropane. So here we have an intermediate, an open intermediate. So that means stereochemical rearrangements can take place. So whenever we have carbene addition to alkenes and no form of rearrangements take place, in other words, our stereochemistry is retained of the alkene, the stereochemistry of our product is the same as that of the alkene, then we can assume that we were dealing with the following molecule, the singlet molecule. But if our alkene difference in differs in stereochemistry compared to our final cyclopropane, then we can assume that our initial molecule was in fact a triplet because only a triplet goes through the following open intermediate.